Well, it's Monday morning, and following Saturday's crash, I'm still feeling quite tender here in the lower left back. Therefore, I'm going to take out the deadlifts and instead replace those with single leg Romanian deadlifts with a kettlebell. And clearly, with a single leg work, I'm going to be using a hell of a lot less weight than for the conventional deadlift, and that means I'm going to be placing much less stress on the back. However, the great thing about the single leg movements is that they'll help me to build up nice, even power through each leg, which will hopefully translate to even power through the pedals on the cycling. And a single leg work also helps build the stabilizing muscles in each leg as well. And that's also quite beneficial to general athletic performance. And I'm gonna complement that with the safety bar squat. But once again, I'm gonna be very careful in terms of the weight I use to ensure that throughout the movement, I'm maintaining really good form. I a nice, upright position, straight back, knees out over the toes, and noting the weakness here in the lower left back, avoiding any small, slight tendency to twist the torso on the way up in the movement. Well, overall, that was a pretty solid uh, strength training session. It was an all body training session and notwithstanding that I was feeling a little bit tender in the lower back, I think it is just musculature because overall, um, you know, the, the single leg Romanian deadlifts are pretty good. Um, I actually went up in weight a little bit um, for the paused safety bar squats, probably because I hadn't preceded it with the really heavy conventional deadlifts. And again, on the upper body session where you saw the tail end of that, I progressed to three sets of eight reps on the paused pull up, which is harder than a chin up, and a one rep max on the incline bench at 60 kilograms. So um, definitely just muscular rather than any kind of lasting damage down there. Well, it's another beautiful crisp winter's morning and so I've decided to take my training outside, continuing with the polarised theme. And I'm liking this kind of training plan so much, that I've actually taken on Ed Laverack as my coach in order to devise specific training sessions to build my top end power and hopefully therefore drag up my zone three and zone four power and really get me ready for some big events over the course of the summer and also the hill climbing season in the autumn. And today's training session is courtesy of Ed, which will see me do two segments of 25 minutes where I'm riding at 75% of my FTP, circa 220 to 225 watts, and then every 30 seconds, interspersing that with 130% of my FTP, circa 390 watts. I'll do that twice, with five minutes of recovery in between. So let's see how I go. Well, Mr. Laverack, that was most definitely a training session that looked easier on paper than it was in reality. But overall, I reckon I got it down to a pretty high standard. I completed both segments of 25 minutes, and I reckon on average, the two minute efforts were in the kind of 200 to 240 watt range, and the 30 second bursts were in the 380 to 440 range. So probably evening out to the kind of the 220 and 400 watt range overall. So fairly happy with that. And it is a little bit harder on undulating terrain to hit the prescribed wattage targets. You have to fettle the gears a little bit in order to achieve it and you have to take a bit of time to get used to doing that um, but you get better as the session progresses and then at the end of the session Ed gave me free reign to work in whichever power band I fancied so I decided to do two hot laps I filmed the final one um, going max effort um, for one lap only um, each lap is 1.6 kilometers and I'm kind of hoping that when I look at the, uh, the power data I'll have averaged north of 340 watts for each of those hot laps
And there goes the daily London peloton. Its numbers are now just starting to swell as we head towards spring. Welcome to Friday morning on Bike Racing Without Mercy. And this morning, Ed Laverack has prescribed for me another polarized training program. It's five minutes of 30-30 into threshold, i.e. zone four. The 30 second sprints are gonna be at north of 400 watts. And the 30 second recoveries, I can go as low as 120 watts. And I'm aiming to sustain above 260 watts for the five minute at threshold. So it's 10 minutes block in total. I'm about seven seconds away from the start of this. And again now. Trying to keep the cadence high to avoid fatiguing my legs. Three seconds recovery. And Ed said this will be a good primer ahead of tomorrow's race, which once again takes me back at the Redbridge Cycling Centre, Hulk Hill. In search of that elusive point to get me from Cat 4 up to Cat 3. Now I haven't got ERG engaged in order to have punch moving from the recovery to the sprint. With ERG, it'll be a five or 10 second lag. And you need punch in a crit race. I'll be interested to see if this does prime me for tomorrow or fatigue me, because it's quite a hard session. I'm just having a 10 minute warm down in zone one and two in Watopia, and including the warm up, that's gonna take this cycling session to exactly 60 minutes, super efficient. And that in turn has enabled me to squeeze in a 40 minute strength training session focused on the upper body in the gym ahead of doing this. And actually there, I hit a new one rep max on the steep incline bench press with a press of 62.5 kilograms versus my body weight of 65, so very happy with that. And as ever, because I'm training first thing in the morning and having eaten plenty of carbs yesterday so my muscle stores are full of glycogen, I've done this training fasted on just the amino acids, caffeine and plenty of water in order to turn on the hormones of cortisol and adrenaline and start the process of converting body fat into energy, i.e. liposis. So inexplicably, I find myself back at Hog Hill for my fourth race here in four weekends in succession, hunting down enough points to get from Cat 4 to Cat 3. Fingers crossed, the level of nerves are high.
but I'm really, really happy, but also very, very relieved. I came fourth, so I've got enough points now to progress from Cat 4 to Cat 3. And I've got to say, Mr. Ed Leverack, your 30-30 primers definitely tired my legs today. Boy, was I feeling um, a little jaded on the hills. But actually, when I look at my power, Ed, notwithstanding the fact that I was feeling jaded, my normalized power was 294 watts, which is a personal best on this circuit. And also, at average speed, 37.9 kilometers an hour, which is pretty good given you've got the steep hill. So all in all, a little bit of progress on all fronts. Celebrating promotion from Cat 4 to Cat 3 with a vegetarian curry. Well, it'd be rude not to. It's delicious. It's been aged in a clay pot. <laughs> 